All right, we are live. Welcome to another edition of Elevate Your Grind. I am your host, Todd Rosales, and I am currently doing my favorite thing in the world, which is hosting this podcast. Um, again, amazing guest. We, another amazing guest today. I'm not sure if we'll ever not have an amazing guest because that's what that show is doing. It is bringing some of the top minds in our industry down with us, having conversation, getting to know who they are as a person, and realistically, we're just showcasing the best of what this industry has to offer to the outside world. If you are on the fence about the cannabis industry or about cannabis products or anything else, please watch this show, educate yourself, find out what we're all about, talk to the good folks that are in the industry. We're friendly, we're very accepting, and we can't wait to have you. This is episode two of three this week. Uh, we are live right now. I'm sorry that we're late, everybody. Um, some of us have to have a day job to pay the bills for this show, so, you know. <laughs> Sometimes things go long, but here we are. Tomorrow, we're going live at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be a little late. I'm going to be able to have dinner with my family and put my little girl to bed. But after that, we're going to have some fun with Kristen Yoder. So definitely check it out, facebook.com slash group. And then if you want to check out, we dropped some great episodes this week on our YouTube. Brady Cobb, Cynthia Salarizeta, Erica Daniels, three awesome interviews, amazing conversations that I had a great time with. You should definitely check that out. So, our guest today, I've been a fan of this product before I knew who he was. As soon as I got into the cannabis industry, this is one of the first things that I saw because I just thought it was cool as crap. I actually have a can in my hand right here. It's upside down. Yes. It's called Cannadips. This product is so cool because I have a lot of friends that dip tobacco. And when I first saw this, I go, I didn't think about it for myself. I go, I have two friends that I would love to give this to to see if we can get them off of dipping tobacco. On top of that, this is a habit that I almost picked up once. But when you do a traditional tobacco dip and you swallow it, well, there's a good chance you're gonna throw up. This is completely different from that and it's something that's very enjoyable, so much so that I'm gonna put one in right now as I go ahead and welcome the founder and CEO of this company. I'm very excited to talk to him, Case Mandel. Case, thank you for joining us today. Right on, thank you, appreciate it. I'll toss one in as well. First of all, this tropical mango is awesome. I really enjoy these, dude. I, so I went, I went on your site. I got the variety pack because I wanted to try everything. Mm -hmm. And I took these out to the golf course with my friends and everybody loved them, man. And to be honest with you, I tend to drink a cup of coffee before I play golf because I'm a caffeine addict like most of America. And that makes me a little bit jittery through the first few holes. Dude, this thing, you put it in, just kind of let it do its thing. People who are used to dipping tobacco know how to use it. For those of you who don't, just kind of put it in. You know, you can squeeze a little bit, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, man, it's nice, even keel. Let me focus in on my golf game. And anything that improves my golf game, I'm 100% for. How – were you a tobacco dipper? How did you get the idea for Canada Dip, man? Talk to me about this. And I know I'm in Florida, so I only get the CBD version. I'd love to talk about the THC version, everything else, but – so many things. So how did the idea for cannabis? Sure. Come out? Well, uh, the idea from cannabis came up from one of my good buddies in high school, uh, Cliff Samet. Um, you know, growing up in Santa Cruz, California, I'm not sure if you've been there, but it's a beautiful little beach town, uh, Surf City, USA. And, and growing up in Santa Cruz, we, uh, surf culture was, was the, the leading culture. Um, and dipping tobacco was like kind of second nature with, with being a guy. So we were chewing at an early age, uh, both went to college, life went on. Cliff gave me a call late one night. It was like, I got this great idea. It's called weed dip. Um, and you know, I was like, that's probably been done over a hundred times. So, you know, I went on Google, he knew I was living in Humboldt. So I was, I, I've been in the cannabis industry over 10 years, um, all facets of the industry. Uh, and, and, you know, the idea was born and we figured out the, you know, 900 hurdles that we needed to uh, climb to make this product work. But we definitely started out as dippers, um, enjoy having something, you know, some play, just some action while we're playing golf, watching TV, checking the waves. Um, and that's, you know, obviously smokeless tobacco is horrible for you. So we, uh, you know, strive to find something to help people quit. Dude, I mean, I, I love this. And, you know, going back saying there, is there still a THC version of this out in California? 
There right? is. There is. Perfect. So what I love about this, when I look at the cannabis industry, right, I'm, I'm, I'm a cannabis user, patient, advocate, whatever you want to call it. But when I, I always try to look at what's going to get the masses into cannabis, right? And I look at the cannabis beverage category and I see that as a great mass market appeal. But the same way that chewing tobacco kind of replaced the invasiveness of smoking, right? I see something like this as a great alternative to cannabis for people that are on the fence about getting into it, right? Because if you and I are going out to dinner or we're out in public or even if we're at a party, you have a joint, you're going to spark that up. That's going to be very invasive, right? It's going to, sure. even before you light it, it's going to smell. Once you light it, it smells. There's going to be a cloud of smoke. It's not just smoking cigarettes. People don't want to be around clouds of smoke and everything. But if we're at a party standing around with a beer and I can toss one of these in, whether it's CBD or the THC version, I can go ahead and get those same effects in a public setting. And I see that as such a more mass market appeal. And oh, by the way, it's not like chewing tobacco. There's not the harmful side effects of it. There's actually beneficial, the benefits that you get from CBD. Um, you know, I know that you own the company, so you've got to be careful with talking about the benefits. But for me, you know, sure. listen, these are not FDA approved, but inflammation, anxiety, you know, just on the golf course, nerves alone, these are great for it. So I think you've done a, a great job with this, but I imagine the R&D process for something like this was very extensive to figure mm -hmm. out how to properly get I don't even know what's in here, but whatever's in this patch <laughs> inside of it to deliver the right effects. Sure. Like there's a part of me that sees you in like overalls and everything else, grounding up leaves and making pouches out of it. But I'm sure it's so much more complicated than that. Sure. You yeah, know, we can get into that. Um, just to kind of touch back on the thing you were saying before. I mean, the idea was born because Cliff was at a Stanford football game in the parking lot. They rolled up a fat joint and we're smoking it and all these little kids were going by on their way to watch football and like the parents gave them a look and they realized like this is not discreet like we're intruding on all these people's lives and like regardless of their belief on cannabis like we're uncomfortable so that's kind of actually how the idea was born which is what you're talking about um, yeah 100 percent. but but the r d side of the product's crazy i mean essentially there's a couple components you know the the main component which isn't even cannabinoid related is just the base material of the product. I mean, when we originally uh, designed this product, I hired a buddy who was living in Ecuador. He was, uh, he started the first microbrewery in Ecuador, was a professional chef. And he came up with the idea of using coconut fiber as a, as a base medium. So a lot of like dip alternative products use mint leaves, spearmint leaves, coffee grounds, and they just taste terrible. Um, so what's interesting about the coconut fiber is a, it's a byproduct of the coconut oil industry. So it's a great thing to use, uh, B it absorbs 20 times its weight in essential oils or flavors. So even if our product didn't have CBD or THC, like it puts out flavor for 30 to 60 minutes and is just enjoyable as like a dip alternative product. So we really like hit a home run and that was kind of our original patent that we filed was around. Uh, coconut fiber and cannabinoids, terpenes, et cetera. So we're, we're really excited about having coconut be the base of our product. Um, you know, little did we know when we were designing this product, we were solving a problem, uh, not just discretion, which, which we just talked about, but also just like edibles take forever to work and they're not reliable. Um, and some people like, you know, the Delta 9 to Delta 11 conversion can be an experience that people just aren't really that into. So we didn't really realize like when we were talking about absorption in the mouth in this product, you know, we started learning how nicotine works, which is water soluble and figuring out like, why does it work so quickly? Oh, there's a buccal artery that goes right to your brain in the back of your mouth. You know, cannabinoids are fat soluble. Uh, you know, they actually can never be water soluble. It's just a marketing gimmick that a lot of companies use. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we've, we have a technology that's water dispersible. Uh, we haven't been able to do, let's say, blood studies. We have to go to, like, Israel or Canada. We're close to prove how quick it, it does uh, get absorbed in, into the body through the buccal artery with our product. But what we can say is it works a lot quicker. Um, and that was a big R&D hurdle. And then I think just technology-wise, I mean, we – being in the industry 10 years, I had a lot of people that I called on. I mean, I started with Dennis Hunter, my buddy who founded Canacraft. 
uh, Care by Design Absolute Extracts. He, he connected me to some, some other chemists in the beginning of this process. And then it wasn't until about a year ago, uh, we had just started working with Brian Quigley. He was the ex-CEO of U.S. Smokeless Tobacco, so Copenhagen Skoll. Um, and he sits on the board of a company called Lexaria Biosciences. And we started doing research and development around their technology with our product um, and have an exclusive with that. And it, it's been working unbelievably. So we're, we're excited that, I mean, I, I imagine at this point, there'd be a lot more competition. I think there's a lot of hurdles from a technological aspect that have kind of slowed people down. And, and we're stoked to be kind of paving the way on the smokeless uh, cannabinoid category for uh, pouches. Dude, I'm, I'm actually shocked too. And it good for you that there isn't more competition, right? I would imagine that something like this would be extremely popular, dude. And I listen, I, I'm maybe I'm just going to go into suck up mode here, but I love everything about this. I love the marketing. I love the logo. I love the look and feel of the can, right? I think, you know, you've solved two problems and one that maybe you weren't even trying to solve at the onset, but it gives a nice alternative to people who dip tobacco, a, a great alternative that's not going to be harmful to them, that's not going to cause mouth cancer and everything else. Like, I think that's almost a, a better accomplishment than giving people a discreet form of cannabis consumption as much as that's what I would use it for. But I was so excited to give this to friends to help transition them off of tobacco into something safer, especially something like CBD, which has a wellness component. Um, and I'm shocked that there aren't more competitors, but that's great for you, right? You know, you, there's, there's a wide sure. open market for you. So you, you have this idea, you talk very scientifically about how this works and the processes behind it. Do you have a background in that? Or is that just something that interests you? Or is it just the passion? Like, I want to create this product so bad, I'm going to go and learn everything that I need to learn to figure out how it's going to work and how we can make it better. Sure. I, I think it's a mixture of both. Um, I mean, I have a bachelor's of science from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So I, like, I had a scientific background. Um, I also was kind of like an avid biohacker at one point. Um, I had my own little pharmaceutical Western medicine uh, disaster where I was poisoned by an antibiotic uh, mm -hmm. seven years ago and kind of had to biohack my way back to, to better health. Uh, and so I, I, I've I definitely know a lot about the body. Um, also, just being in Humboldt County, I mean, this is the land of, of innovation and cannabis. I mean, I pre cannabis uh, was early on into the extraction game. Um, I'm also a co founder of Arcata X, we're like the biggest live resin extractor in the state of California. Um, so, definitely have kind of been uh, leading and around leaders um, in the science on, on this field and kind of lucky that. The community I live in, it's, it's been a norm for a long time. So that's kind of helped lead the progression of uh, product development. What, what is it like growing up in Humboldt and, and growing up, frankly, in an area where cannabis consumption is kind of the norm and, and very accepted, right? You know, I think as a country, everybody in the industry, we're trying to work towards that where the stigma is gone and we can rewind a hundred years where cannabis was was prevalent and hemp was the future of our country and i think that's where we need to get back to especially given where we are today mm -hmm. you know i grew up in south florida where it's kind of like you knew it was around but it still had the the stigma on it right where you lived and maybe i'm stereotyping i feel like it was not only accepted maybe encouraged but it was almost a way of life there what's that experience life and do you think that that kind of normalized the plant to you where it wasn't this stigmatic bad thing for you where you kind of realized that this is something natural that can be used for wellness and therapeutic things um you know growing up kind of understanding and accepting the plant sure well i actually grew up in santa cruz which is also a super liberal cannabis pro space um but i did move up to humboldt when i was 18 um and i can say yeah, the, there is no stigma or fear or worry about cannabis here in the community. You know, I, I was brought into this community from uh, the cannabis side when I was like probably 23 from a music festival called Reggae on the River. It's been going on 35 years. The biggest, it's kind of like on the same level of Burning Man as a uh, heritage music festival where, you know, I was on parking crew. Every single uh, volunteer coordinator was a cannabis farmer. 
and I, I got led into to, to the community here and really realized uh, every single property in Humboldt County, I, I'd be willing to say 98% of properties at that point in the Prop 215 era were all grown cannabis. So, uh, and the whole community survived and thrived on this movement. I mean, every small business, every restaurant, um, I mean, I, you know, even law enforcement was involved in, in, in cannabis and uh, nobody was really passing up the uh, amazing opportunities. I mean, the Emerald Triangle was supplying 70% of the cannabis to the United States for a, a really long period of time. Um, so it's, it's been really normal for, for a long time. And I think the community here, um, outside of getting kind of tarnished in the media from call it, uh, Murder Mountain on Netflix or, you know, I mean, that's what sells is uh, cartels and killing and yeah. cash and, and, and all the bad stuff. And people don't really see like the amazing families and communities and kind of how everyone was brought together and kind of actually how safe this uh, movement has really been. Yeah, I, I've stayed away from Murder Mountain. I actually try to stay away from a lot of the things, not stay away. But I don't love a lot of the things that that negatively impact our, our industry, even if it's a show that, you know, kind of is supposed to be supporting the industry, but really digs into the stoner uh, stereotype. I don't love that because I've been in this industry for a short time, a year and a half, and it's not a bunch of stoners. These are a bunch of hardworking entrepreneurs that have more roadblocks in front of them than any other entrepreneur in any other industry, no matter what anybody says, right? I'm sure you've got the scars on your back. You've lost a few banks, a few payment processors. You can't buy Facebook ads. You know, I commend you sure. for getting very innovative in your marketing. I think I got this right, but I think you guys sponsor the Pat McAfee show. Yeah. Yeah. No, Pat McAfee show is great. Dude, that's, it, that's where I saw you guys come around. I saw Pat do this one thing. He's like, we got an amazing announcement. The Holy grail of flavors is out. Canada dips wintergreen dude I like saw that and I'm like that is some of the best marketing I think you could ever get so you know I say that I, I hate focusing on that stereotype because guys like you you have to be innovative you can't just go out and hire a social media manager or someone who has the traditional playbooks because there's so many roadblocks so let's get into Canada dips as the company right so adult use becomes legal we got Colorado we got California you have come sure. to market with your product and it's not your traditional cannabis product. So I'm assuming when you're calling places for distribution, you're calling friends, luckily you had a network, but I imagine there's some level of education with your products that comes along with getting people to not only carry it in their store, which takes up real estate, but now getting people to adopt this and want to purchase it. Yep. So I, we kind of have two different companies here. We have, you know, Canadips THC, which exists in California. And I can touch on that as well. And then Canada CBD, uh, which is a national brand, and it's actually a, a different company. I'm, I'm a part of both. Um, the THC side was interesting because we launched in California. Um, you know, not a lot of people dip in California. It's only 1.4% of the population. And the dispensaries are all kind of run by more, you know, everyone is very health conscious, eco green. This is, you know, California and people see yeah. this tin and they're like, Oh, get, get this out of my store. Like we, like we don't want tobacco. You're like, no, no, this isn't tobacco. This is like a way to get people off tobacco. It's like we had to yeah. hit that over and over and over. And, and, and that was a struggle. Like if we, you know, if we had launched this in Oklahoma to start on THC, Oklahoma's like 20% of the guys dip. I mean, this is like an yeah. easy, you know, you go in there and people are just slamming and it's like the Pat McAfee show. So yeah, the, T, the THC side, early, you know, we were creating new dippers because such a low percent of the population dip. We went out there doing patient appreciation days, teaching people how to use a pouch. And our social media early on kind of showed that like it was, it was guys and girls, it was Californians. It was just like creating like a new thing. It was almost a dry tincture pouch was like how we were describing these. We didn't want to be labeled as tobacco. Huh. Yeah. You know, it wasn't until we got the CBD product going, um, national distribution, kind of retooled our team and our strategy and realized like dippers, you know, there's, it's a $7 billion industry. 
there's like over 6 billion, 6 million people that chew tobacco in the U S and they know how to use this product. And we know where they shop. They shop in convenience stores. 85% uh, of the dips bought in convenience stores. So from the CBD side, it's, it's pretty easy, right? I mean, we know where they shop. We, we, we know who they are. They're generally men. Uh, and it's, we're not having to create new dippers. Like if we just go after people that dip as, a, as an alternative, a way to quit, however you want to formulate the language, like there is more than enough demand for, for, for us to attack that category. Um, but for California, yeah, I mean, we assembled, you know, roads. I mean, we did it, you know, grassroots road sales team, patient appreciation days. Like it was, it was an uphill climb, especially as California legalized through Prop 64. I mean, Prop 64 was uh, a lot of kinks to, to work out and still is. I mean, California went from a couple thousand dispensaries under Prop 215 to like, you know, a couple hundred dispensaries in Prop 64 and just, it's, it has been a lot um, on top of creating new dippers. So I think uh, two different hurdles, um, you know, CBD is kind of our, our main focus right now. Um, you know, we've retooled our team. We've raised some capital. We actually brought in a new CEO. I'm moving to president on the CBD side of the business. Um, and we're really ramping manufacturing and, and wanting to make, you know, the Canada dips, the idea early on was the Copenhagen of cannabis, but, uh, you know, really, really plant our flag in the ground uh, and, and offer people a little piece of humble wherever they reside. Dude, you know, you talk about the other side, about the CBD side, and you already have dippers and everything else. Just from a CBD standpoint, you mentioned something I really like. You called it a dry tincture, right? So I've had a lot of CBD companies and executives on the show. They all have great products, but at the end of the day, the process of taking a dipper with oil in it and putting it under my tongue and leaving it there is still foreign to me. It's still weird to me, right? Yeah. And I'm someone, I believe in cannabis. I want to consume CBD. I want to use it for the wellness benefits. And this is so much more enjoyable. So take the two use cases we've already talked about aside being a, a safer replacement for dippers or a discrete uh, delivery mechanism for THC, to me, it's almost like, it's not like a sucking candy because it doesn't go away, but it's something you can just put in your mouth and get that CBD into your system. And it's mm -hmm. a lot more friendly. It's, it's a little bit more enjoyable. It's kind of like chewing gum or something else that you kind of use to, if, if you're fidgety like I am, to kind of distract yourself and stay focused. Mm -hmm. Like this is... Yeah. I, I think I'm just going to suck up to you the whole time, but for, for someone like me, this is the perfect delivery mechanism for CBD. So I love this product so much because it touches on so many different Appreciate market points or so many different consumers into the fact that you, I mean, I'm sure my information is old, but I read you guys are in a thousand stores across seven regions and you're actually active in Europe as well. Yeah. I'd say we're, we're in about 5,000 stores. Um, we so I was only off by 4,000. Okay. Got it. It's go been, on. it's been good. Um, and I think it, it's about to go off like wildfire. I mean, 5,000 was great. I think, you know, we have a lot of announcements, um, coming up in, in the next couple of weeks, I think that are going to really, uh, help this product move a lot quicker and make it, you know, more affordable and enjoyable for people. Um, you know, we've just built in a manufacturing facility in Humboldt for the hemp CBD business brand new equipment like it's our our capacity is increasing exponentially so i i'm i'm really excited that that we're gonna have the ability to expand in in the networks we're already in i mean some of our bigger chains i mean we're in circle k uh in a couple states very cool and now we're ready to kind of expand across their platform as well as sheets uh up in the east that's one of our our, our top accounts as well so yeah, it's cool to go on your website and me being down here in South Florida, being able to put in my zip code and seeing all the places that you are right around me. Of course, given the pandemic, I chose to go on the website, which was extremely easy. Um, but so I want to back up. You had mentioned two things that we kind of glossed over, but I think are very important. You guys did a capital raise and then you're also bringing in a new CEO. 
I imagine that the success of the CBD side of the business, first and foremost, is what warranted all of this. I mean, I want to see Canada Dips in every gas station, every convenience store across mm -hmm. America, just as a consumer, man. I have a lot of friends that would stop and get a can of dip on the way to the golf course, never understood it. Now that I have a product in the same form that I enjoy, now I get it. So, you know, unless I can strategically have you introduce to the people <laughs> on my route to the golf course, we need it everywhere. But, you know, at one point as an entrepreneur, just to give advice to people building businesses, do you make the decision to sit back and say, okay, we need to do a capital raise. And then even I commend you as a CEO saying there's someone else that I need to bring in to take us to the next level. I'm still going to be at the, you know, I'm still going to be at the top and I'm going to help form the, the vision of the company, but I need mm -hmm. someone to help me with the day to day. I think those are two extremely difficult decisions, extremely mature, but they're all in the best interest of the company. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, this is consumer packaged goods. This is like the big boy world. Um, and you know, I, that's not necessarily my background. I'm a quick learner. I've done a great job building the brand, developing the products, getting the sales, the relationships. Um, but we have a, you know, and we've done good, but we're not in every convenience store. We're not in all the right States. Um, and we have, you know, we've had some good guidance over the last six months from a consulting standpoint. Um, and we're excited. I mean, our new CEO, Pete D.I. Talevi, He's from, he spent 22 years at Altria, like 11 years as a senior executive. So he ran all of Altria's uh, field sales force, a couple thousand people. Um, you know, he could pick up the phone and call the, a C-suite member of any convenience store chain in the U.S. So that's really helpful. Um, we've also just brought on uh, an ex-general counsel and SVP of sales from Altria as well, uh, Morris Scott. So that's really exciting. Um, and I think it's kind of like our company is a, a good meld of both worlds. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not stepping down. I'm, I'm moving into, you know, the number two role as president. I'm, I'm on chairman of the board. Uh, I'm a full-time employee. You know, a lot of th people think it's like, you know, just handed the keys off and probably working no. even more. <laughs> um, yeah. But we have a, we have a pretty aggressive strategy. I mean, we, Next year, we're going to manufacture, I can't say the number, but a lot of tins. And the year after that, you know, a lot more tins. Um, and we need help to do that. So I think, you know, the capital raise was important. I can say uh, raising money during COVID is not easy, um, even if you have a great product, a great idea. Um, this is a tough time. Like, uh, you know, we raised money for a couple months, a lot of calls. And I think, you know, I, I commend every entrepreneur out there um that's in that same process just to, to not give up and to keep it rolling because i mean you just got to find the right people and, and covid has, has tightened things up i know things are starting to open but uh it's been a, it's been a wild 2020. dude i i commend you and i think it says something about your company that these longtime tobacco executives see the opportunity in your organization to want to come over and want to work with you and a hundred percent, I think it's invaluable. Their Rolodexes are invaluable. And if they're willing, that's what people don't understand. If someone's bringing their Rolodex to your organization, they have enough faith in you to inject you into their relationships. They've built these relationships over a very long time. So for your CEOs or anyone that you're bringing in to pick up the phone and call the head of whatever organization, he believes in your product enough that he knows that that person is going to be extremely happy he made that phone call. I think that says the world about your organization. Um, and if anyone's going to raise capital during the pandemic, it's going to be a cannabis entrepreneur because you guys have had, you guys, I, I don't even include myself in that, organ in that category because for me, COVID made things easier. Now I get to access you on Zoom. I don't have <laughs> to fly across the country. But, you know, for you, you've already dealt with hurdles. It's not running a normal business. So this is just another day in the office for a cannabis entrepreneur. Sure. Um, in the vein of entrepreneurship, I, I did reach out to, to Sam Morales. I found him on LinkedIn. I know that you guys have worked together. He's down mm -hmm. here at Green Lane. Um, I wanted to get some insight into you. He gave me a few things to ask you, but I think this is going to be a really cool story. What is the biggest sacrifice you've made as a cannabis entrepreneur? Biggest sacrifice I've made. Um, 
I, I can imagine where Sam's going with that question. I think, uh, I think the biggest sacrifice I've made as a cannabis entrepreneur is, is just kind of letting, uh, there is no boundaries to entrepreneurship when you're a cannabis entrepreneur. I mean, I, I work 180 hours, you know, as many hours as there are in a week, I'm, I'm working them. Um, and, and really living, breathing, uh, you know, my job in, 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 in this industry. Uh, I think Sam's question, Sam probably wanted to put me on the spot for like a, a funny story in my early uh, uh, cannabis days um, where I actually lost a digit uh in a in a cannabis accident so the uh, biggest sacrifice i made was was losing a half of a uh, half of a toe in a, oh. uh, a large piece of equipment fell and, and, and took it off so I, I think that would be the biggest sacrifice i made in in uh early entrepreneurship but uh i think the real part of the question is when you're a cannabis entrepreneur that's all you are 24 7. I, I, I definitely think that you're right. And um, I think by the time you're done with your journey, you might look at that toe not being the biggest <laughs> sacrifice that you made. But it, it's cool that you get to do something that you're passionate about. I mean, dude, to, to have the wherewithal to come out with this product, and I think the mass market appeal is, is awesome. Do you think that it's your time in Humboldt and having early exposure to cannabis is what led you to have the the innovation to do something like this. I mean, I imagine just having the education and then like you said, you got early into extraction to figure mm -hmm. out what is the next iteration of cannabis that you took it even well beyond that into dip form. Yeah, no, I mean, it was absolutely the, the community I was in that, that led me towards innovation. I mean, I, Humboldt County has got, you know, the top breeders in the world, the top extraction artists. I mean, this is where the whole genetic evolution of, of cannabis kind of occurred. So I think there's, I've been lucky to be around a lot of different people um, that have kind of pushed the science aspect of it. I mean, we were doing crazy extraction sciences before even, you know, anyone knew what was going on. I mean, I think some of the early live resin stuff was coming out of here. The, I mean, I flew to Italy and found technology for terpenes before cannabis that used special solvents no one's heard of. And we were always looking for an innovative and exciting way to capture the essence of this plant. I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing plant and, and a whole host of stuff. So I think, um, you know, and, and we knew, or at least I knew big business could always, you know, it's never worth chasing something that's just going to commoditize, whether it's, you know, just row crop growing or extracting crude oil or uh, making chocolate chip cookies. Like, I'm, I'm never going to be able to win in, in, in that environment. Um, so I think thinking of something really innovative and creative and solving a problem that was a, a bigger lift is kind of where the opportunity lied. It, so... Let me let me ask you one question now because I'm, I'm still enamored on just how you guys are building this this business mm -hmm. now that you have got the cbd side of things and you're going into mass market retail like you said this is cpg so you're fighting for shelf space and i imagine the shelf space that you want is gonna be near the tobacco products as a, as a nice alternative to it how are those conversations going when you're talking to um convenience store change and everything else are they having a cbd conversation with you like hey we've already got these products we're good they're at the counter are they having a tobacco conversation with you are they not knowing the conversation because i just think with a new product like this there's a lot of education to be had along the way but that's both a good and a bad thing it might confuse people but it gives you the opportunity to educate people and i think that just makes it stickier sure yeah no i think uh the conversation is this is a non-tobacco, non-nicotine dip alternative. So we're not just going in saying, hey, slot us in the CBD category with all the other CBD products. Uh, this product's, you know, sitting right next to the smokeless tobacco products. Um, and it's, you know, it's not CBD forward. I think it's, you know, it's all about non-tobacco, non-nicotine, full flavor, um, you know, dip conversation. You know, the, that category is kind of, you know, the tobacco category is, you know, on a decline. So I think innovative new products that capture higher margins 
uh, for retailers is a positive. Um, and this product fits the mold. So I think there, it's definitely a lot more than just another gummy bear tincture, uh, lozenge, et cetera. No, I think it's innovative and I think it's in a category all of its own. And I think you're in an extremely awesome position to capitalize. Cause like you said, there aren't, there isn't much in the way of competition right now. I think it's almost like a recognizable brand without being a recognizable brand. Like I look at the can and I feel like I've seen it before so many times, mm -hmm. even though that I haven't. And you had mentioned that tobacco sales are going down. I think you're going to end up being a huge contributor to that. Um, and, and I think that's awesome. So as you look at building out this business and expanding across the country and across the globe, what are the things that we can expect to see from Canada Dips in the future? Are we going to see more product line, different flavors? Um, you guys, I saw that you guys came out with the Humboldt brand or sorry, the Humboldt line, which is pretty cool. I don't know what that tastes like yet. So I'm actually going to ask you right here. Um, Cause I, I think I got more of the traditional value pack and I got to say, I love all the flavors. I'm a big fan of the citrus and mango first and foremost, maybe because I'm mm -hmm. not a traditional dipper. So, but I can tell you my <laughs> friends are big fans of the mint and whipper wintergreen because Hey, that's uh that's where they come from. So sure. what are we looking at in the future here? Yeah, well, I could say we're looking at plenty of new flavors. Uh, I mean, wintergreen was just our latest wintergreen is 45% of the smokeless tobacco market in the U S. So it's definitely like what people dip. Um, we're also looking at different formats, you know, Canada Dips is in a pouch right now. Uh, who's to say Canada Dips isn't going to be working on an amazing long cut as well. Um, and you know, from the humble collection, that's something that's real special to us because we're flavoring the product with terpenes. So even though it's a CBD product, you know, I mean, for example, I mean, we're even doing partner collabs. Like we did one with, uh, let me show you this right here with lemon tree which is a strain out of Santa Cruz, California. Uh, Very cool. They had their terpenes done in Israel, sent over to us the exact, exact representation of their product. And we're, you know, Humble Collection is bringing like flavor of cannabis plants to dip. I mean, you know, instead of like, you think what is a traditional, you know, like a straight in tobacco tastes like a whiskey tobacco flavor. So we want that in Canada dips to be like OG Kush, Girl Scout That's cookie. Cool. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, then we also are working on some other stuff too. We have, you know, I mean, and it's not to say we're not going to dabble in the white category. That's really taken off. Um, Zin, On, Drift, Velo, uh, as a tobacco-free nicotine product. Those are really popular right now. They're, uh, I kind of, uh, consider them like the jewel pod of, uh, dip pouches because they're like highly effective at driving nicotine um obviously ours would be highly effective at driving cannabinoids um because that's what we're all about but uh we're definitely now that you know we're we've retooled our team we've built a facility um we've brought manufacturing home it's going to free up a lot of my time to get back into the lab and innovate and create uh and i'm really excited about that I can only imagine how excited you are. Is that one of the best parts of your job, getting to do the R&D and, and, and coming oh, yeah. up with new products? 100%. Yeah, no, that's, that's the most exciting thing. I mean, getting to come up with new flavors, new formats, just being able to create. You know, it's like being, you know, being an artist is, is what it's all about. So we're, that's, we're excited. Do you get to be the first one to try the new products? Is that, is, is that, in, the, is that in the standard I, operating procedures? I don't require that, no. No, but I mean, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm creating some of them with some other people working on them. And I, I you know, the, the whole candidates family is, is trying everything. Um, some other stuff we have to look forward to probably one of, you know, call it Q2 of next year um, is looking at, we have an innovative way to uh, go nationally on the THC side. Um, so, you know, like candidates, THC is only in California. CBD is our main focus. I'm, I'm entrenched in the CBD business full time right now. Um, but we have some exciting developments where uh, we see us, you know, maybe even late next year, uh, being able to touch all of the THC markets and uh, provide that product as well for people that want to use cannabis. Well, I'm really excited for that. I will say that I hope that I get to go out to California and try your product before it Q2 of next year and it comes here, but 
depending yeah. on what happens with the world, I might have to wait for that. Let me ask you a little bit more about the actual THC product. So how does that work just from a consumption standpoint? You know, what, what are the, ser- we'll call them serving sizes, but the milligrams in, in the pouches and how does it work? Is it the longer that you keep it in, the more effects that you get? Um, or, you know, are you getting to a certain effect? And then if you want to go further, you put another one in. I'm just, honestly, I'm enamored with that side of it. I just haven't had the ability to get out there and try it yet. So now I'm just going to pick sure. your brain about it. Well, when we originally launched, we, uh, we kept it to just 10 milligrams a pouch, similar to CBD, um, because we weren't really sure what California was doing with the regulations. Um, you know, we're not an edible uh, the product you can remove from your mouth. It's not like a cookie. So the state of California kind of called us an infused product, an oral tincture. Um, and when we kind of lobbied for that and the California Department of Public Health told us that that was our declaration, we, we came out with higher dose products. So we also have 25 milligram pouches as well. Um, you know, I kind of like the 10 milligram pouch. I mean, the product works really quickly. Uh, the cannabinoids leave the pouch the majority within the first five minutes. Um, but it allows people to be in, in control of their dose. I'm kind of the type of guy that like, you know, if you want to use more, I just like to throw three or four pouches in and yeah. kind of pack a, you know, pack a fat lipper. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of how the dosing works for someone that has a higher tolerance. They could take the high dose, you know, pack four or five pouches and get a hundred milligrams. And, and, that, and that's what they need. Uh, I'm just more, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a lightweight. Dude, I can't wait till this product gets here because just the, the use cases for it, going back to the discrete delivery of THC, you know, mm-hmm. um, listen, I work from home so I can say being in the office or going to a comedy club or sporting event or, or any of these places, you know, I, I think it's incredible. And I, I really am excited to try it whenever I get the point. Um, I'm really focused on low THC products at this point, right? Because we all, like you go out to California, you ask about strains and a lot of places, oh, this is the highest THC. This is the highest THC. It's like, I don't ever order Everclear at the bar. And especially now that I've educated myself sure. enough yeah. on cannabis, like there are certain times where it's like, I just, CBD is not doing it enough for me right now. I need a little bit of THC, but I also don't want to buy in. You know, I took this from Emily Paxi. I don't want to buy in for the two martini lunch right away. I just want something that's going to get me a little bit to where I'm going. And I think this is perfect because I can just take it out when I'm there and it's delivery. So I think, dude, I think you've hit on so many great innovations in this industry. It's just, it's a perfect product. And that, that, we got to awesome, get you out to California. I mean, you're welcome to humble anytime. We got can of dips and Arcata X right next to each other. We could be looking at, you know, crazy terpene extractions. And I mean, we're doing tons of brands from cookies to et cetera, all the, all the crazy formulations to what we got going on here. It's, uh, it's, it's a wonderland. And I think it goes for anyone that's listening. If anyone wants to come visit Canada dips in Humboldt County, shoot me a message or on Instagram or on LinkedIn, you know, we'd love to love to show anyone around and what we're doing. Oh, I'm a hundred percent taking you up on that when the world gets somewhat back to normal. Yeah. Um, actually one of the things with, with your other company, Sam was telling me that you have weekly grounding sessions with uh, Lizando Salazar. He wants to know <laughs> why you do that and what that does for you. Yeah, no, Lisandro, uh, one of my good buddies from high school, and uh, he's a little bit more into the grounding, but, uh, you know, being biohackers, he likes to go out there and uh, share negative electrons with the earth and, and center his chi. You know, we are Californians, so um, we get a little, you know, we're a little different. Uh, he's a little bit more on that spectrum than myself, though. But Sam's a big fan, you know, fan of grounding as well, so, I'm, you know, we throw him in the mix, too. I got to tell you, man, I wouldn't, if, if I was just having a normal conversation with you based on the way that you talk about dipping and everything else, I wouldn't, I wouldn't peg you as a Californian who was that way. Right. Um, that, that, that I, I, I look at you more of a fan, the Pat McAfee show. And then that kind of brings me into Sam said, you're also big on sports betting, which I freaking love. Yeah. So obviously my next question is going to be a natural progression. How f- soon until you're just in the entire barstool ecosystem because i just see this being a great fit we're there i mean 
we we've done some work with pardon my take um we're chatting about working with spit and chiclets and then uh you know as barstool is creating their new uh sports betting program um we're finding uh we're finding a way to integrate into the betting software as well so like we're definitely i'm i'm excited about it i mean i've been sports betting is definitely something i've been doing a long time probably since when I was in college, just since I was 21, so about 14 years, you know, I've been using the offshore books. Um, huge baseball fan. I mean, my dad wrote a book on the Giants when I was a kid and traveled with them. And I, I grew up, you know, loving baseball. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of fun that legalization of, of sports betting is moving forward. And, uh, you know, because it's always a little bit more fun when there's some action. On the yeah, dude. That. Now, it's Sports betting is for people. First of all, people, when we talk about betting, it's making sure that you have the money to bet. We're not degenerates. We're not putting our house up here or anything else, but it makes it so much more interesting when you're watching a game. You know, if you're going to watch a random game and you don't have a favorite team, it gives you a favorite team. It gives you a vested interest in that, in that game. Um, How are you doing without sports right now? We got sports. It's, you know, it's an interesting Major League Baseball season. I mean, there's some sports going on right now. I mean. Yeah. It, it's not the same to me, man. I just, I don't know. I'm having a hard time watching the baseball without fans. Golf, I mean, golf I think, is probably the ones who are doing it the best right now. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's different. I'm just happy that something's happening and people are playing and has given some joy to people who are at home. I mean, this has been a really tough year for globally. Um, so I'm, I'm excited that MLB, NBA, NHL, they've all found ways to, even though it's not perfect, or, you know, let's say the Cardinals play 25% less games than everybody else. And we, you know, we figure out ways that um, it's going to work and, you know, entertainment's provided and the players are safe first and foremost as well. Like I, I'm, I commend them because I mean, it's, uh, it hasn't been easy. No, it, it hasn't been easy. It's been some interesting news. Um, I, I'm ready to get back to normal. I love watching sports in person. So actually on the vein of sports betting, I had this thought, it left me, it finally came back to me, uh, which is why I went with the, I forgot about there's no sports question. I have this thesis that, if somebody took the amount of time that a hedge fund manager dedicated to studying the markets and studied sports, that they could potentially outperform the S and P by betting on sports. Am I a crazy gambler or do you think that could be possible? I, I think you're, I think you're a crazy gambler, but I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I've had a couple crazy runs. I mean, what's your best run in uh, sports betting? Just- I don't bet a ton. I think the best run that I had, um, best single bet I had is when I had invested in Bitcoin and it came down, the sports book that I was using actually allowed you to use Bitcoin to bet. Mm-hmm. So I took whatever I had left, a few thousand, put it on the Patriots to win the Super Bowl the year that they came back and won some pretty big there. So I actually made more money by betting on that Super Bowl than I did than keeping it in Bitcoin still to this day. So I I joke around and say that I'm one of the few people that ended up making money in Bitcoin when everybody else was losing, but that's because I used it to gamble. (laughs) That's good. Yeah, I think... uh, Smarter investment. Sports is up and down. I mean, you know, like that's like when you really are betting on the games and you're having to watch every pitch or every, like you really realize uh, there is no safe bet. And, and the house no, always there's wins. no safe bet. It's all for entertainment. And yeah. I'm doing a very good job of getting us off topic here, man, because <laughs> the, the purpose of this show is to talk about the awesome company that you Absolutely. have. But I feel like we're kind of in the same vein here. There's a lot of the same interests. However, we've been talking for an hour and that actually snuck up on me really quickly. Um, let's promote candidates where where can we find it what's the easiest way talk about the social media let me actually get this in frame it's it's upside it's the right side there give us all the social media where we can find it where we can buy it yep candidatescbd.com you can buy it right online um we got a store locator on there as well so you can find the closest store to you 
Um, you could use, I'm trying to think of a, let me, uh, let me get a promo code here. Cool. Look at that. We're getting an uh, office tour too. Getting an office tour. Let's see, let's see if we got anybody. We could use lip boomers as the promo code L I P boomers, B O O M E R S. Uh, okay. For 20, 20% off for people listening. Um, and then, yeah, follow us on social media on Instagram, Canadips for our THC content and Canadips CBD for the CBD content. And just kind of, I think it's fun to follow. Lots of cool pictures of Humboldt. Um, we produce all our own content and we, we have a fun time doing it. I think people can really tell there's heart and soul behind the brand. It's not just a, uh, you know, pop job out to some agency and paying top dollar and, you know like it's real and, and we're capturing what we're doing dude i i like i said i commend you i've been i've been singing your praises throughout this whole interview but you create a product that does it hits on so many needs it's cool it looks great you've got it into the right crowd and i'm really excited to see your growth and you know i'm like i said i'm shocked you don't have more competitors but i think you're just doing such a good job maybe people are scared to get into the space I mean, they're it's, coming, it's a great they're product. coming. It's, it's not an easy product to make, but I mean, we look forward to some healthy competition. I mean, we need to build out the dip pouch category. Uh, you know, it, it can't just be candidates. So we are uh, looking forward to when someone steps up to the plate. Cool, man. Well, I'm, I'm extremely looking forward to your expansion. I love the CBD product. I can't wait to try the THC product. And, you know, as you guys grow, we'd love to have you back and keep us up to date, talk about the things that are going on and, Wish you the best of luck, man. Thank you for doing what you do. Cool. Thank you, Todd. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody, again, for watching. This has been another episode of Elevate Your Grind. And join in tomorrow, 6.30 p.m., Kristen Yoder, facebook.com slash Group. This has been another episode of Elevate Your Grind. We are out.